Well, here we are again, COVID strikes. Praise the Lord, we're okay at this stage anyway. You know, we're doing a, a journey through the Gospel of Mark. And we're going to continue that this morning. So uh, I hope you can engage with us. You're all watching online. Engage with us and enter into this story with us. A reading from Mark chapter 2, verse 13. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him. And Levi got up and followed him. Now there's a series called The Chosen. You can uh, watch it on YouTube or on the app. Rod mentioned this last week. And I'd love us now to look at how the makers of The Chosen depicted this scene. We live in the same world, Matthew. Next. Besides, what else are you going to do with a mind like yours? Matthew. Matthew, son of Alpheus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy's done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to you. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going, guys? Let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're going to throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? We have a celebration to prepare for. You will regret this, Matthew. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. You can put it back. No, no, keep it. You may yet find use for it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. I love that, that scene. And I love the fact that Jesus loves to surprise people. I actually laughed. I've watched that scene quite a few times. I've, I've laughed as I've watched the reactions of the people in that scene. It's so real. Here we have the tax collector, the Jewish tax collector working for the Roman government. And he is not popular at all with anyone. He collects taxes for the, the people's land, for their businesses, for their fishing licenses. But he also takes some for himself. He rips them off. He skims off the top. So he's considered a traitor. The disciples are definitely not happy with Jesus calling this Matthew, who is another name for Levi, to follow him. And I love those words of Peter that we saw in The Chosen. What, what are you doing, Jesus? Do you know who this is? Do you know what he's done? And Jesus goes, yep. He's a tax collector. Peter's like, you've got to be joking. I, I don't get it. 
Jesus goes, well, you didn't get it when I called you either. But, but this is different, says Peter. Get used to different, says Jesus. I love that term, get used to different. You know, we're all different. You can't look around you because then you're in your out lounge room. But really, when you consider it, everyone's different. And Jesus intentionally chose people as his followers who were different. They were from the edges of society, the fishermen, tax collectors. And this really upset and disturbed the religious leaders and also these other disciples, the fishermen. They couldn't work this out. And yet remember what Jesus is training, he's doing in, in the Gospels is he's training his disciples. And right now he's training these fishermen disciples to see that you're in the same boat as Matthew. You think you're better than Matthew, you're not. You're all in the same boat, you're no better. Tax collectors, fishermen, sinners, prostitutes. Jesus is basically saying, you're all welcome in my family. You're all welcome to follow me. And I love Matthew's response. No hesitation. I'm following. I'm following Jesus. You know, Matthew means gift of God. Matthew had spent a fair bit of his working life as a tax collector taking from people. And yet now Jesus calls Matthew to follow him and to become a giver of good news, not just in word, but in action as well. You know, if you're not a Christ follower, I want you to hear Jesus saying to you right now, follow me, follow me. And my encouragement is, do a Matthew. Don't hesitate. You don't have to clean yourself up to follow Jesus. That's what Jesus does. He's in the business of transforming lives. You know, I look at another guy who was in that video we just watched, the Roman soldier. When he hears Matthew starting to move out of the booth, what do you think you're doing? Have you lost your mind, Matthew? You've got money. You've got protection. No Jew lives as good as you, Matthew. And you're going to throw it all away? Yes, says Matthew. Surprise. And it's almost like he's saying, I have seen this Jesus in action. See, this wasn't the first time he saw Jesus. Jesus was in Capernaum. He was in Capernaum. He said, I have seen this Jesus in, in action. I know what he's able to do. I know the way he loves people. I know the way he transforms lives. I've seen it. And yeah, I'm giving up a lot, but I am going with something way better. I'm actually going with the best. You know, following Jesus, yeah, it is risky. But like Matthew is saying, I've found a far greater treasure in Jesus. I've found the best possible treasure you can find. You know, if you're not a Christian, Jesus is calling you to follow him. And he's saying, you are very welcome. Yep, that may be a surprise to you. Because it's not based on what you've done. It's not based on how good you are or what areas do you're in in society. Yep, there is a cost. But look what you gain. For goodness sake, you, you gain eternal life. You gain purpose in life. You gain peace. You gain life with God. And we're not just talking about a God. We're talking about the God, the Lord God Almighty, the God who is in charge of the universe. You gain a relationship with him. What could be better? You know, I really want to encourage you. Reflect on your life. Jesus, the greatest treasure of all, is saying, follow me. Go after him with everything you've got. And if you're a Christ follower, don't take your salvation for granted. This is not ho-hum we're talking about here. If your salvation experience has become ho-hum, then be very intentional. Put some things in place. Develop some new habits. Take some new steps of faith. May thankfulness become a part of your life. Where praise and, and rejoicing. Start to live expectantly because you're in relationship with the Lord God Almighty. That's not a ho-hum experience. Now, I love at the end of that video session, <clears throat> Jesus says, well, let's go. We've got a celebration to prepare for. Matthew's like, what, what, where are we going? 
Uh, there's a dinner party. He says, well, I'm not welcome at dinner parties because he had never been welcome at dinner parties. And Jesus says, well, it's not a problem tonight. You're the host. Surprise. Let's read what happens. Verse 15 to 17. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, remember Levi is Matthew, at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? They didn't ask Jesus, they asked his disciples. But Jesus heard it. On hearing this, Jesus said to them, we're not sure if the them is the disciples or the tax collectors, oh, sorry, or the uh, Pharisees. But Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And in Matthew's gospel, it says, I've come to call sinners to repentance. You know, when Matthew whether Matthew invited all his friends to the meal or whether they all just turned up, we're not sure. But the reality is there were many people enjoying that meal. You know, Jesus loves to eat with people and he loves to eat with sinners. But this was scandalous to the religious leaders. It was a massive surprise. They're thinking, what on earth is this rabbi doing eating with this lowlife? His reputation is going to be tarnished by these sinners because who you eat with is affecting your reputation. They have an exclusive mindset and they're actually pretty angry that Jesus, this rabbi, is eating with these tax collectors and sinners. You see, back then, eating with someone was a statement that you wanted to be associated with that person. It was an affirmation of that person's value and their worth. It was a statement about who you loved and cared about. And for the sinners, this was amazing. Jesus, this rabbi who's done these miracles that we've seen, values us. He's for us. He's on, his, he's on our team. Because Jesus is saying to them, not just with words, but with actions. You are of great value and of great worth. I value you. I welcome you. I want you to be a part of this meal with me and my rela having a relationship with me. You see, with Jesus, there is no partiality. Having meals with people was integral to Jesus' mission of seeking and saving the lost. You know, when the teachers of the law, who were the Pharisees, saw him eating with Jesus, they asked, why does he eat? On hearing this, Jesus said, disciples, on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. So who were the sick? Now, Jesus isn't saying to the Pharisees that you're the righteous ones who don't need a doctor. He's saying, you guys who have memorized all this Old Testament stuff need to live out, to put into practice what you've memorized. You need to actually put it out in your relationships because really what Jesus is saying is everyone's sick. I have come for those who know that they are sick, who know that they need help, who acknowledge they are sick, who acknowledge their need, who acknowledge their sin, and who acknowledge, I need you, Jesus. I need forgiveness for my sin. I need help. They are the ones who Jesus has come for. They are the ones who receive forgiveness. They receive help and they receive freedom. And Jesus is saying to the Pharisees, you don't know how sick you are. That's the problem. You see, pride and fear kept the Pharisees from acknowledging their need and from experiencing Jesus. So therefore, to follow Jesus, we need humility. We need humility. We need to acknowledge that we need help. Jesus is choosing sinners who acknowledge, and that's all of us, who acknowledge they need him 
as his disciples that he wants to pour his life into. That's why he came. So once again, as you sit in your, in your lounge room or wherever you're watching this, you need to hear this. If you're not a Christian, humble yourself. Admit your need. Follow Jesus. You know, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. He is the, whole, the almighty God incarnate who came and lived with us. He loved meals. And in the meals together that he had in Jesus' day, it really brought out the whole character and the nature of God. Because when they had a meal together in their home, what they were really saying was there is nothing between us. Everything is forgiven. There's a saying they used to have, the Jews have still even today. They say, as they get their piece of bread with their hummus, they some come, let us wipe the plate clean together. All is forgiven. So Jesus was saying, I forgive you. There's nothing between us. You know, when, meal, when people sit and face each other at meals, there is a sense of we are in this together. There is a shared experience. There is a lingering. It's not a race. Not like some of our meals. There is joy. There is kindness. There is a thankful attitude. There is a sense of developing intimacy. There is fellowship. There is significant conversation. And relationships grow. You see, eating together creates the opportunity for learning and for relationship. And so today for us, eating with people provides fantastic opportunities for people to experience the reality of God. And any meal can be significant in building the kingdom of God. So my encouragement is to you, and it's not really hard to do, eat with other people across the board. Do what Jesus was renowned for doing. Number one, enjoy other people's hospitality. You know, if people invite you to enjoy a meal with them, enjoy it. Have fun. Enjoy meals with people in their own settings. I find it fascinating when you do this with people from other cultures. It's like you enter into a whole new world. <clears throat> and what it does is it opens the door for dialogue. So a meal in their setting opens the door for us to eat and to listen to their story. They may ask you about your story. <clears throat> And your story may be a bridge. It may be a bridge where you can share some things. You can share something about Jesus. You can maybe pray a blessing over them. Because what happens is the good news is revealed because you are at the table with them. So yeah, eat the food that is offered to you. Listen to their stories. Encourage them. Minister. Share a little of your story. This may be a bridge to sharing God's story. And obviously the other side of the coin is that you initiate. You invite people to enjoy a meal or a coffee with you. And for some of you, this is outside of your comfort zone. Can I just encourage you? The Christian life is about taking risks. It's about faith. It's about developing our spiritual muscle. Can I encourage you? Develop your hospitality muscle. Work through your fear. Maybe even work through your prejudice. Take a risk. Reflect the hospitality of God to people in some new ways. Remember, God opened himself up to us through Jesus' coming. God always opens himself up to us. So develop, develop the habit of eating with, regularly with people that you don't normally see a lot of, whether they're believers in Christ or not believers. Because what we're doing as we're having meals with people is we are walking in the footsteps of Jesus. We are involved in what he's on about. <clears throat> Just last week, uh, Raymond, myself, my wife and I enjoyed a meal with a couple who are around about my age. We've known them for nearly 40 years. They're not Christ followers that I know of. They haven't said, and in our conversations, they've never said, yep, we're Christ followers. 
but they know I'm a pastor and we had a great meal out. And in the course of the conversation, uh, they were talking about their hundred year old father and how he was just wanting to go, basically. And we chatted and we talked about uh, that situation and had a great night. You know, the next day, I thought to myself, what an idiot, David. I didn't even ask any significant questions that might have taken the conversation a bit deeper. You know, I didn't say to them, what, what are your thoughts on life after death? And I started to beat myself up a bit, you know, and I was thinking, ah, oh, gee, why, how come? And I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, David, just relax, will you? You had a great night. They know who you are. They know what you believe. You didn't have to ping them. You didn't have to open up the conversation. It was okay. Now, if I had gone that way, it would have been okay as well. But it's like God was saying to me, just relax. You had a great night developing ongoing relationship with some good friends. You know, I got another friend that uh, for the last probably 15 years, we've been eating breakfast together every couple of months. He's not a Christ follower either. And I remember him saying to me one time a number of years ago, he said, David, who else does this? I said, does what? Eats breakfast. And he said, no, 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 no. Who, who else sits down like this, two men together, having a meal and talking about significant things in life? And we'd talked about a lot of stuff. We'd talked about Christianity. We'd talked about the resurrection and, and the cross. We'd talked about what it means. we talked about... Uh, raising kids we talked about how our kids are going we talked about his business and where what the next steps were in that we talked about a lot of stuff very significant he said to me who else does this and then he said something he said i don't know anyone else who does this all i'm saying is bring people to your table the meals you already have enjoy them together invite others into it you know, we're starting Alpha on Tuesday, hopefully, if lockdown is okay. Even at this late stage, invite a friend to come and do Alpha with you. We have food, good food, excellent food. Plus, they get an opportunity to experience something of what God is on about. Can I encourage you? Can you play with this? Keep it light. Play with this. Don't see it as a task that you've got to accomplish something. Just play with it. Now, be creative. Take a bit of a risk this week if lockdown is not on still. The reality is it may make an eternal difference to someone. Maybe. Because meals open the door for engagement and for building relationships and for God to work miracles. And it may surprise you what Jesus does through a meal. Jesus Christ is in you. If you're a Christ follower, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Christ is in you. So when you have meals with people, Jesus is sitting at the table with you. And the Holy Spirit is at work in ways that you cannot believe. Meals are opportunities to slow down, to tell stories, to share life, to linger. And remember, Jesus is there with you. I just remember about a month or so ago, we were down south. About 18 of us guys were on a man space uh, weekend away, all camping. We're sitting around a fire. We just had a beautiful meal together. People had their own stuff. And we're just sitting around and a couple of guys just shared their story. We listened to, to people share their story. We talked about some of the aspects of the story. We prayed for each other. And I thought, what a great night. And I could almost hear Jesus saying, hey, David, I love this. I love this lingering. Guys sharing story, talking about what God has done in their life. I love this. So again, can I encourage you? You don't have to get 18 guys around your campfire. But can I encourage you to play with this? Open up a space where there's food and be surprised by Jesus. You know, whether Matthew invited them all to come to a meal with Jesus or whether they just rocked up, they had a very great time with him. We don't know what came out of that, but we know that it gave Jesus opportunity to share with people. The same can happen 
in your situation. You know, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. If you're a Christ follower, can I encourage you, keep eating the bread of life. Keep spending time with Jesus. Keep eating with Jesus. Keep having regular meals with Jesus. The overflow may surprise you and it may surprise others around you. You know, one person said recently that they noticed when their wife was having regular times in the Word and they noticed when she wasn't because she was different. It was a gentler, compassionate, understanding, lingering with Jesus in the Word, engaging with Him, listening to Him, being thankful changes us and it reveals to other people more of who God is. You know, when we think about communion, you'll be having communion at some point today. We have it regularly on a Sunday. That was a meal that was instituted by Jesus for us to look back on and to remember what Jesus had done for us, died on the cross for us, gave his life for us. When we eat of the bread, we remember his body that was given for us. When we drink of the cup, we remember his blood that was poured out for us for the forgiveness of our sin. And you know, the other feast that I'm looking forward to is that future meal with Jesus and the billions of disciples, the wedding feast of the Lamb. It's described briefly in Revelation chapter 19. As we're all there, as people who are all sinners but who have acknowledged our need of Jesus, we are all there by the grace of God. We are all there through our faith. We chose to follow Jesus. And, and I love the fact that we're all there from every different nation on earth, all misfits, all tax collectors and sinners and fishermen and businessmen, refugees. We're all there as part of his family to enjoy the greatest banquet we could ever possibly imagine. You know, as you have meals, as you linger with Jesus, if you celebrate the reality of Jesus, you are preparing for the wedding feast of the Lamb in eternity. I pray that you look forward to that meal with passion. And I pray also that through your life, you'll be welcoming more people who are going to be a part of that feast in eternity. So again, as we wrap this up, if you're not a Christ follower, please know that God wants you to be in his family. He wants you to, to be someone who's going to be there in that final eternal time with him in eternity, enjoying that feast that he has prepared for us to enjoy. He wants you in his family. He's done everything possible to open the door for you to join his family. Remember, God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Humble yourself. Receive Jesus Christ into your life and join in with the billions of others who are Christ followers. I pray you'd respond to that today. God bless you heaps. How about I pray for you as we go. Father, we thank you so much for the story of Matthew, the story of someone who was not expecting to be called to follow you, but was so thankful that you did call him. And Father, I want to pray that everyone who's uh, engaging with us on the screen today, every one of them who is a Christ follower, that they'd be more and more passionate about helping others to experience Jesus, that they'd be more and more passionate about joining in with the meal that they can have with you on a regular basis. And Lord, for any here or watching who are not Christ followers, Lord, I pray that they would humble themselves and acknowledge their need of you and give their life to you. Father, we thank you afresh 
for the hope that comes through relationship with Jesus, the hope and the peace and the joy. Lord, may we more and more experience that and overflow with it to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, God bless you heaps. We'll see you in the future, hopefully live. God bless you. Bye-bye.